Let's have a look at the new and updated sublimating templates on a 3-up mug template. That's three templates on one sheet. And I'll outline A4 in US letter and how to create them using Affinity Designer version 2.3. I also mentioned the iPad versions, but not in so much detail, because they're virtually the same, just different uh, locations for the instructions. So let's get right to it. Set up your document in Affinity Designer Desktop. We're going to actually do two documents, as I mentioned, the A4 and the letter. Now, when you first open Affinity Designer and you click on New, that's that will come up. So select the A4 print mode, or you can just go straight to letter if you like, because that is the dimensions are mentioned further on. So the same thing applies to Affinity Designer for the iPad, and likewise, if you want to use Affinity Photo. It's virtually the same thing in this case. You're just putting guides on a piece of paper. But for now, go to File, New, and firstly select A4. Now if you're using the iPad, it's the same thing, only the user interface is slightly different, and you can see it there. Just check your page width and page height are the right way around, that you've got RGB selected, and so on. Now let's look at the next one. Set your settings as shown in the images. In this one we've got A4, there's a layout, 210mm by 287mm. You can leave the colour as RGB. Most printers adjust to their own colour scheme anyway, and you get a much better range of design colours if you don't set it to CMYK. Similarly, try to use 300 dpi. You can always reduce it to 72 later if you really need to, but normally your printer will take care of all this. Transparent background also gives you much more control of the finished graphic. Now this is the first tab of the three across there. You've got layout, colour, margins and bleed. Don't click on create until you've finished all this. Now the first second tab is colour. Select transparent background. You definitely want a tra transparent background. Now the next tab is margins. You don't want any margins. So uncheck the include margins. No bleed is the next one. That's the next tab along. Now in the bleed area, you uncheck them. There's no margins and set the bleed to zero. In Affinity Designer for iPad, you set the bleed to zero and uncheck margins. Now let's put some non-printing guides in now. So this is where back to Affinity Designer 2.3 on the desktop. Select View and Guides. That'll put a check mark next to that and you'll see the pop-up there. The Guides tool will pop up. To add a guide, click on the little almost invisible icon right at the bottom left. And you can't just copy these settings to the US letter page. The sizes are slightly different. To add a guide, click on the little almost invisible icon, as I mentioned, right at the bottom left. That will put a guide in the center. Add the guides as shown by clicking on the little symbol at the bottom, and then edit the number that pops into the column. These numbers are placed numerically in order, so be careful as they will shuffle around automatically as you add a guide. And the guide you add will always default to the center line. And then you change it and it will move into place. It's a bit of a fiddle, but you will get it. Turn off the gutter. You set that to zero. Then close it. Go to View and Lock Guides so you can't accidentally change them. Now the US letter guide measurements, I've set these to millimetres in this case just because it's easier for me. Just change it all back to inches in document setup if you would rather inches. 
and I've put the guides here in inches so you can see them anyway. So you can work directly in inches if you're using US leather. You can see how they match the millimetres and the inches and you can do them in one or the other and just change it in document setup. Now the iPad guide measurements are slightly different. Add your guides in the iPad in much the same way, although it's a slightly different interface, accessible from the tool on the top right that looks like a car windscreen wiper. You can see it up there next to the magnet. Enter your guides in the top section to the same settings as used on the desktop. You can see you've got a horizontal guide or a vertical guide and you drag those to the size you want and you can adjust that with the little um, the little interface just below it. In this one it's showing 0, 0 millimeters, the position, and you can adjust it there. As I say, I'm not going into detail in the iPad one because there's not been a lot of call for it, but it's very similar. Now let's add the images. You can download those from my website. The address follows in the next couple of slides. We can either copy and paste or place the images, whichever you like. In order to keep the aspect ratio right, that is, keep the height related to the width, you can drag out a corner point. You just need some slight adjustment now. Or in the transform panel, you can enable the chain link so that when you alter the height, the width changes for you automatically. Now let's see that option. In the transform panel, enable the chain link, which is right at the right hand side there. Make sure you click on the blue dot in the middle of the square in the bottom left. That makes sure you're centering from the center. You're adjusting from the center of the image, not the top left hand corner or some strange place on the canvas. You can now start adding your images, keeping them within the boundaries of the non-printing guides. You will have three sublimation prints per sheet. You can place the images wherever you like horizontally, keeping in mind that the blank panels either side are the areas that the handle of the mug will occupy. The centre line is the side of the mug furthest away from the handle. Now if you want those on the facing side or the off side, you can make the images smaller and just reposition them according to those guidelines that are there. You can experiment with that. The last action is to export your page. You can print the page directly to your printer or you can export the page to a PNG or PDF file for printing later. And you can see it there, ready for export. All I've got to do is print export and it will print that as a PNG file on an A4 size piece of paper. Now that's the end of this little exercise. Remember that when you come to print these out, your printer will undoubtedly not want to print the size right. They never do. Printers can be such a mess. You may be lucky, however. Thank you for watching. You'll find the example files of the images in the Affinity Download folder on both my UK and US websites. Like the US website one is difficult to locate. But the main one is fine and the address is there. It should also be in the description. Now looking directly at opening the file, we're going to work on A4 in this example. So file, new, and we'll select A4, 210 by 297 millimeters. The width is 210, the height is 297. So as you can see, it's a nice portrait size. We don't want to hit create just yet, because what I want to do is make sure it's the right size, it's the right DPI, embedded images, and it's in millimeters. If you are using the letter one, you would set it to inches, 11.5 by 11 inches. We're using A4. Color, now you go to color and check 
transparent background. That's fairly straightforward. That's all you do in there. Go to margins. Now we don't want to include margins because they're just a nuisance at, the, at this stage. Go to bleed, the next option. Set all the bleeds to zero so there's no bleed lines showing around the image. Scale we can ignore for now. So set layout. Now that's all we've got there and that's what we need for that. Now we can click create. And there's our document there. Now we're going to go in and set our guides. View guides. Now this little panel pops up and here we've got there's where you add your guides to the list of guides. Now let me look at the settings. That hasn't gone away. If you click outside of the boundaries, it just sets that behind it. So there's our first guide. If you click on that, add some a new horizontal guide, it puts a default in, in the center, you can see there. But we want to edit that. So double click on it and put in two millimeters. That's the first guide. Now we're going to set in the next guide. Double click on it and we want 97.2. Click the next guide, 99.8. Now we need the next guide, 105, 105, sorry, 195, 195. Set a new guide. Now you can see the default 148.5 is less than that, so it's put it behind it. So we've got to go and change it anyway. 197.7, 197.7, click enter and you can see it puts it in the right place. Now the last one on this side, you can see it's put it in the center again, so we've got to go to, oops, 292.6 and there it is in the right place. Now we do the same with the other side, 40. We leave 105, that's the middle one. Let's add another one, but we'll make this 40.9, 40.9, and it pops it above it. Isn't that neat? The next one's 166, 166.4. Press enter, and that's it. Now, set the gutter to zero, and that's all we need to do there, that's all we need to do there, and you can see already in the background where we've got the guides showing. We can close that, and we can go up here to lock the guides. That locks the guides in place theoretically, so we can't move them, and that should be as it should be, and that's what we've got. Now I won't go and do the A4 one because it's very similar, only it's a different size piece of paper. Now we've got our images, let's add the images. This is all there is to it here. File, place, now I can go find them. And I've got them in the downloads folder, if I can just find the downloads folder. Uh, downloads, there we go. There's the three up mug, which I downloaded from my own website, 76. Let's pop that in there. Put it right there and drag it out. You can see that you can move that anywhere you like. So there's, we can put a, 
an area around there, a dead centre line through there, so you can get it, but at the moment, that's pretty close. Okay, now well, that one's in there. Let's place the next image, file, place. 75 is the next one. Drag that down there. That one's a bit bigger, that image. We can drag that out there to the edge. doesn't deform it too much. And the last one, file, place, 74, open, and oh, that one got away from me, didn't it? There we go. It's the right width. And we've just made it the right height. Now, of course, obviously, you can make those any size you like. Select the image, and there it is. That's I don't. You don't need to alter them at all in size. You can leave them as they are, and they'll show quite nicely on the mug. That's all there is to it. And then you can go up there to File, Export, and you can export it as a PNG or a PDF, or in fact any of those, but for printing it out, PNG or PDF are probably your best option. I'll just cancel those because I don't need to print them out here. There we go. That's all there is to that. So thanks for watching this little exercise. Go ahead. Make my day. Subscribe.